From Protoss to Big Boss, nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else. That is correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us today, we have Brennan Lee Mulligan. Hello! We have Ify Wadiway. Right back at you. <laughs> and playing, instead of being behind the camera, we have Michael Saltzman. I'm excited to be exposed as a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, well, before you say that, I mean, there, there is something that is uniting all three of our contestants uh, today, and that is that the three of you have all either written Um Actually questions before or hosted Um Actually before, so you have a feeling of what it feels like on the other side of the contestant table, uh, so this is a, a bit of a battle of the, the Um Actually writers, the behind-the-scenes episode, if you will. Of... A council of sages, very well. <laughs> very well. I've gathered you all here to tell me why I'm wrong. <laughs> 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 the greatest minds that I could find to just fucking lay into me and tell me what I fucked up this time. Honestly, I could really use that in my life. I would love to have that. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I don't need to explain how the game works to you. You know it better than anyone. Uh, but. If anyone is joining us for the first time, you don't know what the hell it is you're watching. This here is a little game show called Um Actually. I have here a stack of statements. These are incorrect, false statements about nerdy shit that you all know and love. It's up to these fine contestants to find what's wrong, buzz in, and correct me. All the corrections must be preceded with the phrase, um, actually. If they don't, I won't give them the point. And you can interrupt me whenever you want. We're going to go right into our first statement here. There are a few noticeable differences between HBO's Lovecraft Country and the book by Matt Ruff that it was based on. In the book, Uncle George plays a much larger role and Diana is a boy named Horace. However, these differences are directly referenced on the show in yet another change. Atticus travels to the future and comes back with a copy of Matt Ruff's Lovecraft Country, complete with all the differences mentioned above. Osmond, what is wrong here? I'm just going to take a stab at it. Uh, um, okay. actually, Uncle George does not have a larger role in the book. Uh, he does, yeah. In mm. in uh, in the book, uh, the, the, obviously spoilers, you're watching Um, actually. Can everyone calm down? Uh, in the <laughs> book, uh, uh, Uncle George uh, doesn't die uh, and, and just kind of keeps uh, doing, doing shit uh, throughout the whole story. So, yeah, he has a much larger oh, role. I'm really Brennan. happy for him. That's great. Yeah. yeah, I'm, yeah. Hey, I'm glad you didn't die. That's, uh, that's a good, good time for you. Uh, Brennan. Um, actually... Uh, Diana does play Horace, but is still a girl in the other book. <laughs> a girl named Horace. Uh, no, that is that is incorrect. That is uh, that is not it. Uh, Iffy. I was going to say, um, actually, the little boy's name is not Horace in ah. the book. Uh, the little boy's name is Horace. Mm. That is all okay. correct. Um, actually, the copy of the book that he brings back th that we see in the show is not written by Matt Ruff. It's written by someone else. That is correct. Wow. Uh, wow. <laughs> Saltzman on the board. Oh, no, that's all I wanted. I just wanted the one. <laughs> Do you know who it's written by in, in the show? No, I, I honestly have no fucking clue. No clue. Does anyone else know? Did anyone watch Lovecraft Country? <laughs> I'm working my way through it, and it was just spoiled for me. I'm sorry. Uh, but oh. I, it's okay, but you're right. I did lag on it, and I have a huge I don't care about spoilers <laughs> rule that I abide by. But I will say it was written by the main character. That is a very good guess, but that is incorrect. Uh, Saltzman, we'll, we'll leave that point for you. <sighs> uh, in the show, he does bring back the, a copy of Lovecraft Country, but in the show, it's not written by Matt Ruff. It's written by George Freeman, who is Atticus's son. Uh, so it's like his his future progeny has written this book about his own Ooh. family. Uh, yeah. So it is like a meta on meta where it's like, it's based on this book. The book that they reference does have the changes from the original book, but in the show, the book is not written by the person that the book is actually written by. It's written by a character in the show. Uh, yeah. If you can keep track of all that. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to watch it. I, I've heard nothing but good things and confusing things, but good things mostly. I was actually like reading the book and watching the show at the same time. In part because I started watching the show and I was like, I was like, oh, this feels like very short story y. And I was like, I wonder how much of this is like directly based on the book and how much is, is like them going off on their own. And what's interesting is I, I actually learned that it was originally pitched as a TV show, didn't get picked up. So he wrote it as a book. So the book is sort of written in a sort of like episodic short story oh, yeah, kind cool. of way. But then the book was adapted to a TV show. So it is this weird, like intended for one medium, written for another, but then 
converted back yeah. into a different medium. It's like, okay, well, well, that's whatever you got to do. R. R. Martin too, because like that, that yeah. kind of what happened with him too is like he made Game of Thrones and because he was a TV writer originally and it was kind yeah. of episodic and then it ended up making its way back. In my head, I do like the idea that he didn't, that Matt Ruff didn't intend it to be a novel. The studio just kept asking for more and more in-depth <laughs> outlines <laughs> until eventually he was like, oh shit, this is a novel. This is 565 yeah. Yeah, yeah. pages. That feels not outside the realm of possibilities. <laughs> like, can you yeah. give us more information? And then like by the end, it's like, oh, I should just publish this. Fuck. Hollywood. <laughs> Pitch document. What the hell? <laughs> um, well, that point will go to Saltzman, and uh, we'll move on to our next statement here. In the first episode of Gravity Falls, Dipper finds one of three mysterious journals emblazoned with a six fingered hand and the number three, which details some of the supernatural weirdness of Gravity Falls. The author of the journal is later revealed to be Dipper's great uncle Stanley Pines, the secret twin brother of great uncle Stanford Pines. Saltzman is buzzed in. I'm actually, I think you <laughs> switched Stanford and Stanley. Uh, I, I'm actually, that is exactly what I have done. I have swapped yes. around the names Stanford and Stanley. Uh, the journals were written Gravity by Falls. Stanford, not Stanley, uh, as I claim. Well, shit. Yeah, I missed that train. That's another show whose train I missed. Gravity, Gravity Falls Gravity is Falls. phenomenal. I love that show. I was very late to it. And then by the time I finally got around to it, I was like, oh, this is an incredible show. It's Twin Peaks for children. Yeah. Uh, or <laughs> or X-Files, a little bit of X-Files thrown in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, that point will go to Saul. Smith. Coming out the gate hot, guys. Yeah. All right. You were all, you were all worried so that you... This is a ringer. This is a ringer. We've been put in... <laughs> You're all ringers. This is a, this is you can't hustle. complain about... Every this one of you hustle. is a ringer. This is, this is a, a, a an expendables of ringers. That's the, you know, like we've taken... <laughs> they've I'm taken the... Let you know right now. If this next question is in Lord of the Rings or anime, this is rigged. <laughs> <laughs> You brought us on here to make us look a fool. In the 1984 Christmas special, uh, Naruto yeah. attends the <laughs> Battle of Eleanor Fields. Yeah. Um. <laughs> we'll move on to our next statement here. 2019's The Mandalorian is the first live action Star Wars TV series and also features the first on screen appearance of another member of Yoda's species. Despite their rarity on film, other members of this species, which has no canonical name, have appeared in other media, including Vandar Tokare in Knights of the Old Republic and Yaddle, who appears in the Darth Vader comic series. Uh, if he's buzzed in. Oh, uh, I buzzed in because you said it was the first appearance of another member of Yoda's species, yeah. which is incorrect because Yaddle was in the movies before, uh, before, I guess his name is Grundo now? Uh, <laughs> Grogu. Uh, Grogu. <laughs> um, did you say I'm um, actually? No. I'm um, actually. And I'm I've, actually. And I've, <laughs> and I've buzzed in. Wow. If you look, you will find that I've buzzed in. Brennan has indeed buzzed in. Brennan, do you have something to say? Um, actually, what if he said? <laughs> I'm going to need you to be, I'm going to need you to remember a little bit of what if he said. Oh, you will? Well. <laughs> <laughs> he j literally just said it. Um, actually, uh, in the... Uh, uh, Grogu, uh, the or AKA Baby Yoda in The Mandalorian, <laughs> is not the first time that a member of Yoda's species other than Yoda has appeared uh, in a canonical Star Wars franchise. That is correct. Uh, if he had all the details, unfortunately, he didn't say of actually. Wow, uh, so dude, <laughs> brutal. Doesn't feel good. Never feels good. Had to do it. You were real quick on that buzzer for it to not feel good. <laughs> Brennan is sword oh. fighting. He saw your foot slip a little and he just <laughs> went in for the, for the kill. You know, they truly do be like that. <laughs> Uh, if you're right, Yaddle, who I mentioned, who appears in the Darth Vader comic series, also does appear in, in the prequels. I don't think she says anything. I think she just sort of sits on the council, nodding sagely. Uh, but Yaddle is, in fact, there. Also, this is a good time to, I think, point out how insane it is that there isn't a canonical name for Yoda's species. Because this yeah. is Star Wars, where they, like... If a guy in the background of the cantina orders a drink, it's immediately like, oh, him? That's Fimbo Big Bar. Fimbo Big Bar comes from this race of whatever. They love drinking blue milk, and their favorite thing to do is, that, like, there's a whole backstory invented for every single, like, side character and background thing. And the fact that Yoda's species is just like, I don't know, just a bunch of Yodas, I guess. Like, come on! 
on, give us something. <laughs> it's like, I feel like it's almost like blasphemous though to try and name Yoda's species though. Like I feel like people treat it like, no, 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 no. Yoda's species has to be like ultra mysterious. You cannot mm -hmm. know any information, but they have to be like a black hole of information. That's not fair to Yoda. He has to represent his whole race. It's like, it's like, oh, you're a bunch yeah. of Yodas. It's like, hey, come on, don't do that. I definitely grew up subscribing to the, and was really annoyed when I found out that this just couldn't be canon anymore. But like, I definitely grew up subscribing to the idea that Yoda was just a really old dude who just lived like, <laughs> an extraordinarily <laughs> long time. And that's why there wasn't an alien species of him. If you just keep aging, this is what happens. You're a happens. little shorter, exactly, yeah. you lose your yeah, hair, you, you lose some toes. Your voice gets weird. <laughs> it also kind of makes sense if it is something just like, uh, like maybe the name is just really stupid in that like stupid Star Wars name way. And like, they're just super embarrassed about it, you know, or it's like, it's like, oh, the name for 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 Yoda's species is like Dildoos or something. It's like, it's like, yeah, we don't like, we don't like admitting that we're, that the name of us is Dildo. Well, um, that is that, that was, uh, if you knew all the answers, but Brennan got the point for that one for mm. taking advantage mm. of the rules. And we will move to our uh, fan question here. This was submitted to us by a viewer. This comes to us from Tori Mahoney. Considered by some to be the first sci-fi novel, A True Story is a novel written by Lucian of Samoseta in the second century AD. It is the story of a band of travelers sailing over the Atlantic before being caught up in a whirlwind and sent to an unfamiliar planet embroiled in a war of strange alien hybrids. It is the earliest known work of fiction to include travel to outer space, alien life forms, and interplanetary warfare. Saltzman. Um, actually, uh, like, there's, like, hieroglyphics with aliens in them, right? So, like, that's got to be the oldest word, right? Come on, guys. <laughs> we've, all, we've all seen See, the History Channel. This wait, is... you're talking about Stargate. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not, that's not what we're looking for. Um, actually, I don't think it would be considered a novel, because I believe novel has a stricter literary definition. <laughs> and isn't Don Quixote widely regarded as the first actual <laughs> novel? We're once again getting caught up in the uh, how we define uh, like, what a definition of a novel is. Yeah, I know that you wanted us to dive into the content of the works of Lucian <laughs> of Semoseta, which yeah. all three of us have so clearly read. I was just I, passing by listen. my local tablet salesman on the corner who was <laughs> passing this off to me. So stupid that I didn't read it already. Uh, if he, um, actually, it did not come out in second century <laughs> AD. Uh, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Brendan, we'll give you this last guess, and then we'll we'll call. It here. Okay, if this is it, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a backflip. Um, actually, it would not have been referred to as outer space in the text, but rather probably by the terms firmament or dealing with the phlogiston. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe you were giving me such a hard time being like, oh, like I didn't pick up my tablets and stuff. Like well, you thought it would be familiar with this. In the <laughs> well, obviously they're referring to the phlogiston and the ether, and of course, like the outer. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what we're looking for, Brennan. I'll go ahead. I'll, I'll reveal the answer here. Um, the heroes don't don't travel to an unfamiliar pa planet. They travel to the moon. Um, uh, so it's not unfamiliar. Mm. It is this being, mm. but it, they do travel like from the Earth to the moon. And as it turns out, there is an alien war going on there between the kings of the sun and the moon, right. fighting over uh, the colonization of the Morning Star or right. or Venus. Um, there are like alien hybrids between like the people of the sun and the moon, and you know outer space travel. Uh, uh, so it has those sci-fi elements. Very cool. Ma to uh, Tori Mahoney, very cool question. I dig that. Yeah. That's very, very cool. That was a classy question is what that Yeah, very was classy. classy question, Tori yeah. Mahoney. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. No points for that one, but this will bring us to our first shiny question. This is a game called What's Wrong With This Picture? You know how this works. Uh, we're going to show you an image, but something is wrong with it. Whoever can identify what is wrong will get the point. Let's go ahead and show that image. Uh, Ippy has buzzed in, as has Brennan. <laughs> I'm, I'm tied between two. Either the base he created is missing or Earth in the background. And I got to choose one. So I'm going to say Earth <laughs> in the background. That is incorrect. That is incorrect, yeah. I would say. Brennan. Um, actually, can't you see his dong in this? <laughs> you have removed his dong, good sir, and I demand that you put it back. No, that is, uh, we have not, we have, there's been no dong removal. Saltzman, do you know the answer? I'm pretty sure I do. This caption doesn't go with this image. That's correct. This is something of a meme that has floated around the internet, but this frame as it exists 
does not exist in the Watchmen yeah. comic. It's these two different frames that someone has mashed together, and that is oh, what wow. has floated around the internet. A little piece of information literacy. We're all we're having our memory of the thing itself be collapsed by meme yep. culture. Look at that. <laughs> the memes are destroying our brains. We know. <laughs> oh, uh, Bridgman, do you have a correction there? First of all, that's not the right quote. He never says, I'm tired of Earth. He says, I'm tired of this planet. Mm. And that actual oh God, caption yeah. comes from uh, a part where he's oh, like man. wandering through a, a bar in Arizona that he used to go to. And that panel where he's looking at the stars is also empty. Whoa. Cool. What? And that so... image has been, is also a meme. My brain. <laughs> There's a dong in the right image, though. <laughs> so in a way, Brennan was right. So in the image, Image where the quote is said, there should be a dog. <laughs> <laughs> now hold on here, because if I'm gonna fuck Iffy, you know I'm gonna fuck Saltzman. Because yeah. here's the deal. <laughs> Someone just clip that part <laughs> out. <laughs> but Brennan, that's can, not the image we were showing. You can always bet on dong. And let me tell you, you know, you make whatever ruling you think is fair trap, but I think if we go back and we listen to what my correction was, we will find. I said, shouldn't we be seeing a dong right now? Um, well, that's always true, Brennan. We should always be seeing a dong. To everyone watching this at home, you are watching this game be stolen in front of your eyes. Uh, you know what to do. Uh, Get in the comments. God damn it. <laughs> Look, if Saltzman had said some bullshit, I might have been more convinced. The fact that he got exactly what we were talking about, I can't take that away. <laughs> well, we'll move on to our next statement here. Venom is an alien symbiote with the ability to bond with all kinds of creatures. Though he's most commonly associated with Eddie Brock, his first human host, Venom has been depicted as bonding with other humans like Flash Thompson and Matt Gargan, as well as non-human hosts like a T-Rex, Dracula, and a cartoon pig. Uh, if he is buzzed in. Um, actually, Eddie Brock was not his first human host. It was Peter Parker. That's correct. That's what we're looking for. Oh, Peter Parker is the first fire. human host. The, those other things are all true. There, uh, There is, uh, at, at least in some version of the comics, there is a Venom version of a T-Rex. There's also a Venom Dracula and a Venom version of Spider-Ham, uh, which is, uh, who's named Pork Grind, who is the Venom uh, cartoon <laughs> pig. <laughs> <laughs> he is more badass. I'll give him that. Look at that. Jesus. Is that Dracula? <laughs> That's Dracula. That's good. Cool. I love the idea of Dracula like bonding with Venom. Like he's already Dracula. He's, yeah, already... he's like, no, I need more power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is Venom really doing for Dracula? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is he bringing to the table? Based on the most authoritative Venom source, which is the movie Venom, which is most sure. Like, yes, most of course. Is coming from. I'm pretty sure they also have to, it has to like feed through a host. Like it can't mm. like, really eat on its own. Uh, uh, well, we will, uh, that point went to Iffy, and we'll move on to our next statement here. Bunnies and Burrows is a tabletop role-playing game inspired by the book Watership Down. While some might scoff at a game where the characters only play as rabbits, the game introduced a number of RPG mechanics now common in tabletop RPGs. It was the first RPG that allowed players to have non-humanoid roles, the first to have a detailed martial arts known as hair ate, and the first to have a detailed skill system. Uh, Brennan has buzzed in. Um, actually, it's not called Herate. It is It is not called Herate. That is the answer I was okay. looking for. Because they're yeah, not hares, they're rabbits. It is not called Herate. Any idea what it, what the what the martial arts was called? Um, Bunfu. Uh, What'd I'm you say? Actually, it, it is called Bunfu. Give me that point! Give me that point! Give me that point! Give me that point! Give me that! Thank you! That, Thank you! I Thanks think it feels it. only fair to, to, to <laughs> yes. Let's just know the rules. This. We've played this <laughs> game enough times to know if you guess the thing and we're shooting in the dark, you get the point. It is my point now, Brennan. <laughs> I I I, I I I I literally have forgotten the last five minutes of my life. I feel, I, feel, I, feel, I, I feel physically crazy right now. I feel, I feel because not only did Ify just get that point, but it was with su my brain. My, every processor has crashed because two pieces of information are jockeying for power. I've lost and bun fu is real. Do you get how I can't be okay now? I can't believe how fast you were on it with bun fu. Like, does anyone know what it could be? And you're just like, oh, fucking yeah, it's, it's gotta be a bun fu. Is that something well, you'd heard of I, before where you're just like, this has to be the only thing that makes sense? I am the guy who spent a year writing for a pun based show. You better believe <laughs> that I'm gonna. I truly believe. 
I could tell you almost every single fact about the novel Watership Down. I think I could top to bottom tell you every single character. I could tell you about Frith and Ella Herrera and the Black Rabbit of Death. We could be here all day, but I could never have told you Bun Fu. <laughs> The way combat is depicted in Watership Down is it is the grimiest, nastiest, scariest. Like these buns it's like are a bar cute. fight. So the idea of then switching over to bun foo, <laughs> oh, this is incredible. Well, we'll move on to our next statement here. I guess that one's gotta go to Iffy, swooping into the last minute. We all know about Sabrina the Teenage Witch, but do you know about Sabrina's twin, Katrina the Teenage Witch? In the rare instance that someone from the Spellman family has a twin, one of them is always evil, which is why Katrina was kept secret for so long. Uh, Brennan. Um, actually, uh, Sabrina's the evil twin. It's a good guess. Uh, and in fact, in the episode, she thinks that that might in fact be the case. But by the end, it's revealed that no, she is not the evil one. Uh, it, is, it is Katrina who is evil. Uh, Iffy. Um, actually, it's not actually rare that witches have twins. Uh, they all, they, you know, there's all that evil running, run, running about. <laughs> that was a little mumbled, but I, that's <laughs> kind of what we're going for. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's not witches specifically, but it, the Spellman family, the, the Spellman family has a family secret. That secret turns out to be that everyone in the Spellman family has a twin. And indeed, uh, one of those twins is always evil. And I believe the evil one gets like banished to some evil dimension or something like that. Oh, uh, so are we talking about Netflix, Sabrina, or the We Melissa are talking Joan about the, the, the Melissa Joan Hart. <laughs> Sabrina the and, and I, then I now am getting like a flashback memory to that episode because <laughs> also, oh man, the blonde aunt was, oh, that, that had Iffy's heart. Uh, <laughs> so locked in. That's why I was really tuned in. Uh, also, to point something out, this could be a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Because if every time you have a set of twins that are born, you banish mm. one of them, guaranteed that other one is not gonna feel great about your family. I believe the way, it, the way it works sort of in the show is that like, there were the twins, they're separated, but one hasn't been banished yet. Uh, and then at a certain age, they, they're brought back together and it's like, okay, well now it's time, um, uh, now it's time to determine which of you is the evil one. Bridgman, maybe you could check me on this. I want to say that they were either going to banish them to an evil dimension or maybe throw the evil one into a volcano. That might have been a thing that was it. Uh, the and, volcano uh, is the test to figure out who is the evil one. That's like the secret test. How does the volcano tell you who is evil? It's the cut a child in half bit. Yes, exactly. It's, like, it's oh, the King Solomon. Uh, throw her in and she's like, oh, no, I'll do it. And then you're like, oh, you're the good one because you wouldn't uh, sacrifice someone. That seems super I mean, manipulative and shitty to your children. That's all I know. <laughs> <doing. laughs> They're witches, Saltzman. <laughs> They're witches. <laughs> one last clarification before we move on, just to, because I said the blonde aunt. They're both blonde, but Beth Broderick, who is not related to Matthew Broderick, which Google told me, is the one I had a crush on. And and uh, apparently, according to Google's single. So if you're an um, <laughs> actual fan. Hey, if you're watching open. this. God, incredible. <laughs> Iffy's brand is so strong that we had we took a break in the middle of the round to specify which of the ants from Sabrina <laughs> is not only hot, but available. So that's, <laughs> I love that. Well, that one will go to Iffy and we will move to our next question, which is our second shiny question. Um, this is a game we're calling, we're not so different, you and I. Uh, so in just a moment, I'm gonna put up uh, six different characters. These may seem like very different uh, uh, characters from different franchises, but there's something that they all have in common. Uh, whoever can identify the thing that unites these characters that they all have in common will get the point. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at these characters. Uh, iffy. Um, actually, they all have evil dads. That's correct. Yes, oh, all of these characters God. have have <laughs> evil villainous dads. Uh, dads who are a a major villain. Uh, do, uh, nice. do you, can you name can you name their uh, their dads? Well, yeah, I know Luke, Darth, obviously. Sure. Uh, uh, Quicksilver, Magneto, uh -huh. uh, Hellboy, Satan, mm -hmm, uh, sure. <laughs> uh, uh, Raven. I don't know her. 
dad. He's from like the the dark dimension. Yeah, the multi eyed uh, demon guy. Yeah, yeah, that dude. Uh, Smurfette and Buzz were the ones that through the process of elimination, I was like, I guess is Smurfette is it is her dad the weird dark old dude? Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a bit of a, a cheat, but um, she was created by Gargamel, um, oh, and she okay. does refer to Gargamel as her dad. Um, so okay. if she considers him her dad, then I will oh, yeah, too. And, and Zed is technically Buzz's. Dad. Uh, yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, uh, right. uh, there, yes, uh, there is a moment which calls back to uh, to the yeah. Star Wars scene. The, the Zerg is Buzz's father. So yes, these all have villainous dads. Very good iffy for identifying <laughs> what they all have in common. Here is our next statement. Mummies Alive was a short-lived cartoon from the 90s about an evil sorcerer trying to kill the reincarnation of Egyptian Prince Rapses and the magical mummy bodyguard sworn to protect him. Each guardian is aligned with the power of an animal associated with an Egyptian god. Jack Hall uses the power of a jackal, Rath uses the spirit of a snake, Armin uses the spirit of ram, and Nefertina uses the spirit of cat. Iffy. Um, actually, Jack Hall is the fake one. That is correct. In what way is it wrong? Uh, he doesn't use the spirit of a jackal. He that uses... is correct. And what does he use? He, uh, he uses the... Hold on. I watched this. This goes my... Did shit. you really watch? I put this in yeah, here. I was I like, no one watched alive. Mummies Alive. Because yeah. <laughs> I remember... That's why I knew Nefertina is the cat. Because I yeah. remember that. Mm -hmm. I remember the snake. And I remember the ram. But Jack Hall... Was it one of those weird, like, Anubis dogs? Is that... Is that... <laughs> uh, it is not a weird Anubis uh, dog. Uh, you've both buzzed in. Saltzman did beat you, Brennan. Um, actually, it was a bird, like a falcon or an eagle. It was a falcon. Uh, it was yes. a falcon. <laughs> Jackal. I was Jackal. trying to think what would irritate me the most, and I was like, that would piss me off. <laughs> so... Are you, are we to understand yes. that in a show mm -hmm. about Egyptian animal god representation, that not only is there no jackal, but mm -hmm. there's no jackal in a team with a guy whose canonical name is Jack Hall. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> I bet there was a writer's meeting where someone said exactly what you're saying and that character's name was something else. And they're like, maybe we just name one of them Jackal and then we'll be yeah, fitting yeah. a Jackal in there. <laughs> All right, here's our next statement. In the fifth element, Diva Plava Laguna is a singer aboard luxury space liner Flosten Paradise. During shooting, her appearance was specifically kept hidden from the cast in order to capture genuine reactions to both her appearance and performance. Or Saltzman. Um, actually, they weren't looking for a genuine reaction to the performance because Eric Serra's score, like that performance is like a chopped up electronic piece using like different vocal pi like pitch maneuvers and stuff like that. That's pr that's actually kind of what we're looking for. Uh, they weren't looking, they were looking for a reaction to her appearance, but uh, not her performance because specifically that piece of music that they composed for her is physically impossible for a right. human to sing. Yeah, mine was gonna be, there was no sound. So <laughs> now you choose which is writer. Uh, <laughs> I was obsessed with that fucking soundtrack after that. I mean, I was obsessed with the whole movie, <laughs> but that soundtrack specifically, I jammed out to the Fifth Element soundtrack like it was like the hottest record that has ever been dropped <laughs> and like tried to play it for people to get them into it. And they were like, okay, uh, this is a soundtrack. This is weird what you're doing right Get now. into it, yeah. come on. It is really funny though, within the world of the Fifth Element, that they're like, who is the best agent to transport these highly clandestine secret tablets to activate the fifth element. And you're like, what about the most famous singer in the world? And are you good to do a show like 20 minutes before you have to pass off these rocks? It's like, hell yeah, I'd be happy And maybe to. even like literally pass them because they're inside her, right? It would be like if, if we had a plan to like stop an apocalypse here on earth and we were like, who should pass off the briefcase with the like, like the, the nuclear codes? And you're like, Ariana Grande, baby. Let's. <laughs> they wouldn't see it coming. Well, uh, Saltzman will give you that point then. Well, this will bring us to our last shiny question. This is a game called A Book By Its Cover. Uh, so we are going to show you uh, book covers. Book covers, uh, these are first edition book covers of books that you may know. But we have removed the title and the author from the book. So we're gonna see if you can identify uh, the, what the book is just based on this cover. Let's take a look at that first cover. Brennan has buzzed in. Um, actually, is this, is this ENM Banks? Uh, it is not. Iffy. 
Is it the, I'm um, trying to remember the original name of Blade Runners, what robots think about when they dream? Uh, <laughs> do androids dream of electric sheep? Uh, it, is, it is not that, no. I'll say no one got this one. This is Snow Crash. This is the first edition oh, cover of Snow shit. Crash. Let's take a look at the next cover. Brennan has buzzed in. I'm um, actually, is this Catch-22? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, Iffy. I'm um, actually, is this Frankenstein? Uh, it's not Frankenstein. Uh, Saltzman. Yeah, I'm just gonna say Stranger in a Strange Land. I just wanna make a guess. It's not Stranger in a Strange <laughs> Land. It sounds like we're all a little puzzled here, so we'll, uh, we'll say no one got that one. This is actually the first edition of A Clockwork Orange. Oh, uh, nice. wow. All right, let's take a look at our next one. Brennan has buzzed in. I'm actually The Witcher. Uh, no. Uh, iffy, yeah. I'm actually Game of Thrones. No, it's not It's not Game of Thrones. No. Saltzman. Name of the Wind. I know that's wrong. I'm just gonna say it. No, that's not correct. Everyone's kind of like weirdly, like you're correct that this is a more <laughs> modern book. You've hit like a lot of these like like genre tropes. This is the first edition cover for The Way of Kings. Oh. Uh, let's take a look at that next cover. Uh, Brennan. The lady who stood too close to a floating tattoo. <laughs> I want that to be it so badly. That is not correct. I'm sorry to say. Uh, just say it's uh, fucking John Carter. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> John Carter. <laughs> Why not? Uh, it doesn't sound like we're going to get this one. So let's go ahead and reveal it. This is Kushiel's dart. We've got two more left. Let's take a look at our next one. Saltzman. I'm going to say it's just because I know you love this author. That's probably like a China Marvel book. Oh, that, <laughs> I, that, I like I like you gaming uh, gaming the system there. <laughs> this is not a China Marvel <laughs> book. No, it's yeah. not. It's not. We'll go and reveal the answer. Uh, this is uh, Shadow and Claw. All right, we've only got one left. Let's take a look. Winner take all. Does anyone know this one? Ooh. Brennan. Swords of Sh Shannara. <laughs> no. Uh, iffy. Um, actually, this ain't the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, <laughs> a porn book parody. Uh, no, no, that is not what that is. This is the first book in the Xanth series by Piers Anthony. Oh. This is a spell for chameleon. Is this the, the fucking series that takes place in Florida? Uh, it's not Florida, Brendan. It just happens to look exactly like Florida. Uh, oh, and includes, oh, oh, the and includes ogre places like ogre the ogre from Ogre Swamp. <laughs> you can kind of tell that dude's from Florida. He just needs like a gas station trucker hat and, <laughs> and like big frayed cargo shorts. Also, I just noticed hearing you read this title out loud and the author's name that Pierce Anthony has Xanth in his name, and that's bullshit. You better believe it does. <laughs> this if you, has just been blown wide open. We have cracked. Big old goose egg on that one. Uh, zero points all around. Uh, perhaps I chose two modern or two uh, less well-known uh, covers there, so perhaps the arrow's on me. Either way, no points for anyone there. Our last question, as always, concerns real-life skills. And this is, uh, this is a very different sort of real life skills that we're going to do this time. Now, um, uh, we're shooting this remotely, so all of you are, are at home right now. And quite simply, this point will be, this will be a little bit subjective, but uh, this point will go to uh, whomever can right now from somewhere in their house show on camera that they have a nicely folded fitted sheet. <laughs> Bitch. I'm, in the, I'm in the basement. I got all the way upstairs. <laughs> it doesn't count if you're folding it now. Oh, I'm not last. Uh, I want to let you know that I didn't cheat, and this is what I've got. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, really? You didn't cheat? <laughs> I didn't cheat. <laughs> you didn't just fold that right now? <laughs> I, I looked in our linen closet and I was like, Maybe I got lucky and Caitlin folded it nicely. And I was like, nope, she doesn't know how to do this shit either. I swear I feel like Brennan's is going to be very neat and ungodly because he was homeschooled. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I have for you. Let's see, get a good look at those sheets. Very good. I think... I think that Brennan's and Iffy's look pretty neat. Saltzman that looks a little messy. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's a ball. It's just a ball of shit. It's not folded. 
Well, I'll give I'll give both Brennan and Iffy a point for that one. But I would uh, like to say this: Why fold them? <laughs> Why fold them? What what is what is the purpose? Hey, look, if I were on this episode, I wouldn't. Re- I would have something between Iffy's and Saltzman's sheet, uh, something that was approaching folding, but definitely not really there. I never needed to know how to fold a fitted sheet because up until extremely recently, we're talking like count the years on one hand recently. The idea of having more than one fitted sheet was uh, it's just, it's impossible. <laughs> yeah, that's my sheet. When it gets dirty, I wash it, and then I put it back on the bed. That's reasonable. Uh, well, uh, uh, what is our final scoreline here? Salt with five, oh, if you five, Brennan with two. That means that that is a tie with between it's, Salsa it's, and Iffy and Brennan. Brennan with one two. Second, I gotta, Uh-oh. I'm going to take my hat off. I, t- I, t- I take my hat off <laughs> to the both of you. Oh, you're such a classy guy, Brennan. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, I've been I've been fighting, you know, to to stay on top in another tie. I'm glad to share with Saltzman and glad to prevent Brennan from catching up. <laughs> uh, well, thank you uh, all for playing uh, with us today. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have an issue with anything we said, of course, you know to get in the comments. Uh, and you can join us next time for even more pedantic corrections right here on Um Actually. Actually.